Joshua and Jesus. Did you know that the very name Joshua is the same name as Jesus? And in Hebrew, it's Yeshua. It's all the same name, and it means salvation. Isn't that amazing? Now, we're going to get into this right now. Look at this. This is amazing when you look at the scriptures. Watch this. Chapter 1 of Joshua. Now, it came about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun. The son of Nun? That's kind of funny. (laughs) But... Moses' servant saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now rise and cross this Jordan. Now, check this out, guys. Moses represented the law, right? The law of Moses. But he could not bring the people into the promised land, to the land of flowing with milk and honey, the, the awesome, glorious land. He couldn't do it. But Joshua, Yeshua, Jesus, right? He could, and he did, and he brought the people into the promised land. And that's the picture of Jesus in Joshua's story. He's a type and a picture of Jesus. Amazing stuff, guys. So God says, now arise, cross this Jordan into what? The promised land, right? And uh, you and all this people to the land which I am going to give them to the sons of Israel. From the wilderness, this Lebanon, even as far as the great river, God said, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, as far as the great sea toward the setting of the sun will be your territory. Now, what is that? Well, first, let's look at Israel today. This is where Israel is today, this tiny little nation about the size of New Jersey, right? And it's this really small, small nation surrounded by all kinds of enemies, which could be the Ezekiel 38, 39 thing about to happen. You could check one of my videos out in that. We've been covering that really carefully. So here it is, that tiny little sliver of a nation surrounded by enemies. But during Solomon's reign, it was a lot bigger. It was about two thirds bigger and it covered all this land. And this was the greatest time for Israel's history as far as owning land and how glorious they were and rich and prosperous. This was the greatest time in Solomon's reign. But they didn't have all of the land that God promised because the Euphrates River is right here. So God's saying like all of this is going to belong to Israel. Watch this. Look at this slide. Here is the area. So here's the the great river, Egypt, the Egypt River, and then the Euphrates River right here. And then it spoke of the sun setting, the sea where the sun sets, that's the Mediterranean. And then a straight line across right here would give Israel all of this land when Jesus returns during the millennial, the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ, of Yeshua HaMashiach from Jerusalem, physically from Jerusalem in Israel. That will happen, my friend. So amazing stuff, right? In Joshua's story, God promised all that land. So Joshua, uh, they traveled from Egypt. Remember, they were this area right here, the land of Goshen, that was the best of the land of Egypt. And they had to flee from that Pharaoh. They might've gone this way, right through here, crossing the Red Sea. An enemy was crushed. Uh, Egypt was, their enemy was crushed behind them. And then they came over here into the area of uh, the Midian area, right? And then they traveled for 40 years all through the wilderness and God brings them right up into Israel, right on the border, right here. And they cross, uh, I think they were actually right up here and they cross the Jordan River, right above the Dead Sea there. They cross the Jordan River to attack Jericho, right? To attack Jericho. And it's a picture of how Jesus is going to work, I believe, in the tribulation period because Jesus is going to come back. And before he comes back, he sends two witnesses. Well, Joshua, we're going to see this a little little bit here, but Joshua sends two spies into that promised land, right? God sends two witnesses right before he returns. This is amazing stuff, guys. So Deuteronomy 1 says this, Joshua, the son of Nun, who stands before you, shall himself enter there, encourage him, he's speaking to Moses here, for he will give it to Israel as an inheritance. Joshua or Jesus, right? Yeshua, Joshua, Yeshua, Jesus. It speaks of the second coming, you guys. 
This time, two spies, right, with Joshua, two spies or witnesses, you could say, are sent into the promised land, but this time by Jesus in the second coming will be sent into the promised land. Many of us speculated that it was Elijah and Moses. It could very well be. Remember, we met with those two on that mountain when it was transfigured into his glorious state, and those two were there, and Peter was saying, I'm going to build a tent for all three of you. Remember that? Well, God had a little meeting with those two, interestingly, in Israel. But is it those two? Nobody knows for sure until it happens. So Revelation 11.3 says this, And I will grant authority to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1,260 days. That's three and a half years, right? Clothed in sackcloth. From where? From Jerusalem, right? So I believe that Jericho is a picture and a type of the Jerusalem in that time of the end, in that tribulation period. So here's all of the land that they occupied after they fought and Caleb, his buddy, right? I love that. I have, a, I have a couple of friends named Caleb, and I love that name. But Caleb of the tribe of Judah, right? Of the lineage of, of Judah. They went in and they fought. And, and Caleb was 80 years old, and he wanted the hardest area, the hill country. Here it is, the her- area of Ephraim right here. He fought and conquered this area during that great battle. But what happened Joshua and the army, they defeated the enemies and they occupied the promised land. So chapter one of Joshua says, for within three days, you are going to cross the Jordan. Three days. Isn't that interesting? To go into, to take the possession of the land, which the Lord your God is going to, is giving you to possess it. To, it's going to be theirs to possess you guys. Then Joshua, the son of Nun, sent two men as spies secretly from Shittim saying, go view the land, especially Jericho. Interesting. They're on a mission. These two, right? And here is the harlot. Uh, oh, I can't remember her name. We're going to see it here in a minute, but here's the two spies that Joshua sent. She's sending a cord down, right? A scarlet cord. Rahab. Rahab is, is her name. And she was considered to be, I think she was in the, the hall of fame, the faith, the hall of faith, right? In Hebrews chapter 11, I think she was named in there. Interesting stuff. And she's actually in the lineage of Jesus. Isn't that awesome? So chapter two says, when we come into the land, you tie this cord of scarlet thread in the window, these two spies tell her. So they're telling her to tie this red, crimson red, scarlet, right, cord, this rope from the window to protect her. So they can identify her. She was hiding these two witnesses, or these two spies. She was hiding them and she was considered righteous by God. She had faith. So they tell her to tie that crimson red cord. Here is what's called the tola or the tolath, right? And the tola shani, shani means scarlet. The tola means this crimson worm, the scarlet worm, right? And Israel would crush these. They'd collect them off of trees and they'd dry them and crush them to make the red dye for the, the scarlet dye for the veil of the temple, the tapestries inside of the holy place, right? Of the, the tabernacle or the temple, the priestly garments, but also they would use it to tie around this, to dye the, the yarn that was tied around the scapegoat. Well, in Psalm 22, it says, but I am a worm and not a man. But what is that worm? That worm, you guys, is this worm, the tola, which was used for the crimson red dye. What did they tell? What did those two witnesses or those two spies tell Rahab, the, the scarlet? They told her to... They told her to tie a scarlet cord, have it tied in and down your window to mark your home as a place to be safe, that that won't be destroyed. The scarlet thread that runs through the whole Bible, the gospel of Jesus Christ, my friend. This little worm tells the picture of the gospel. It climbs up a tree one time in its life to give birth to its offspring, and it sticks itself to the tree, and it literally bursts open like Jesus's heart that was pierced and burst open and the offspring are dyed this crimson red color the rest of their lives. And then in three days, that little, that red dye on that mark that marks the tree that this crimson worm climbs up turns as white as snow. 
Isn't that amazing? It's a picture of the gospel right there, you guys, because Jesus makes our sins whiter than snow. Isn't that, that's awesome. I love that. So she it's, it probably used one of these, this dye material, right? To, to dye this cord, this rope of, to make the scarlet color. And here's a video that we'll, I, I put together and I actually purchased some of these little tolas or these crimson worms as they're called today. I can't remember the exact, I think it's the, uh, elixis, the crocus worm, which is the crimson worm. And they use it today in dyeing all kinds of products. It's an organic dye. But here, this is what they do in Israel. They crush these things first, right? They would get these dried little tolas and they would crush them. Here's a little stone I used to crush to make a powder, a crimson or scarlet red powder out of these things. And it was to make the dye. So in a minute here, you'll see I'll pour the water in. It'll immediately, it turns a crimson red color. The same color that that scarlet cord, right, was used by Rahab in Jericho to mark her family and her home as safe. From what? From Joshua and his army through the power of the Lord as they came and they destroyed Jericho. So it speaks, I believe, of the revelation, the two witnesses that we see in Revelation as well. So watch this. The water is about to be poured in, and you're going to see the actual color of this dye right here. This is amazing, you guys. So that's what that powder would look like. And here comes the water. Look at that. Isn't that amazing, you guys? God is so amazing that he put all of this together for us to look at. Now I'm going to dip in some some cord it's actually this pole rope from my my lawn mower and this little rope will turn that crimson or scarlet red color just like the story in joshua just like rahab would have done here it is look at this didn't take long and this is cold water they would use actually a really hot water with this crimson red color but here you can see this cord with the scarlet cord. Isn't that amazing, my friend? God is so amazing. So Joshua, what did they do? They went around the, the city walls of Jericho seven times. They blast the trumpet. There's, it speaks of all that stuff that happens in the book of Revelation. When Jesus comes back, you guys, here's the scarlet cord hanging out of the window and her home and herself and her family, they were safe. And that speaks of what? The tribulation saints, I believe, being protected by what? By the blood of the lamb, by what Jesus did on the cross. Here's that famous picture of those giant grapes, right? When they came back, the spies initially came back and they said that there's there's fruit in, in the land. This is truly is a land of milk and honey. But it was only Joshua and Caleb who had the courage that said, it would, no, God can give us victory over these people. And they were the only ones that gave back the first time, the good report. Just like Jesus the first time was rejected, right, by the Israel, but the second time he comes and saves them and they'll receive him. So chapter one says, have I not commanded you, God said to Joshua here, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified or dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Be strong and courageous. My word to you, if you're in Israel or anywhere in the world, you might be in despair right now because all the things that are happening in our world right now, be strong and courageous in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and courageous in him. He has victory. He wins in the end. In the, in the very end, the last part of that book of Revelation, Jesus wins, my friend. He defeats all of the enemies and protects his people, the church, and his people, and Israel. He defects, defends both of them. He protects both of them. This is amazing, you guys. Spelled out in Joseph's story, spelled out in Moses' story, the same thing. Gentile brides, and then he saves Israel during a time of great trouble. So, hey, if you want to see more in the Old Testament, how to find Jesus in the Old Testament, click on this playlist right here. You will be blessed by it, my friends. So click on this playlist.